Welcome everybody. We are happy to have this conversation with you. Hi, I'm Rosie Davenport from the UK. Hi, how are you? Which school? I study fashion journalism at Central St. Martins, London. Uh, journalism? Oh, we're going to get tough question. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, I wanted to ask you, how do you resolve any um, disagreements you might have when you're collaborating together? Ah, I love the question. Uh, yes. Uh, mm. Actually, we don't have so many. Mm. But because between ourselves, we said, if you really hate something, we don't do it, and, if, and, and vice versa. So it was very clear. So when one says, I don't like it, it's out of the problem, except one insists and the other one is convinced. But actually, I knew since the beginning that we didn't have so many discussions, and that's the discussion around something that is not uh, fundamental. Yes, yeah, same for me. We are both constantly, like, discussing and communicating and, and having conversations, ongoing conversations about ideas. So for me, it's completely natural that if we both think about something and it doesn't really match, that we just say like, oh, skip, move on, next thing, because there were so much more things that do match. Or the other one convinced you, for instance, I, all my life I hated pinna stripe and this show is full <laughs> of pinna stripe and they love it, I am in love, and I said it was the one, more pinna stripe. <laughs> So, also, what I think is good is the possibility to change your mind. Mm -hmm. I decided to do that because I wanted to have discussion and to change my mind. I always want to change my mind. So, also, you start thinking in a different way because the other one suggests you ideas that maybe you didn't have. And so far, for me, it's, um, it's a good point. Yeah. Because too. I don't see the moment we decided to collaborate, it was a decision, so no one obliged us. So uh, we like to do it. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Congratulations Thank again. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you so much. Hello, Celeste. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Nice to meet you. How, How are, are you? you? Very well. I'm doing well. well. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Why is facial design so important to Prada in parallel with the clothing? I think with the situation in the world right now, it, it, it becomes a very, very strong... The idea of environment in general, whether it's your house, the places you visit, the places where you meet people, the public space and uh, private space, it's, I, I think that we are encountering a situation we don't even know that we could possibly ever imagine, having the, normally the freedom to move to wherever we want to. So it's obviously a very, as we constantly are in dialogue about our fashion in relation to our society, it is obviously something that impacted us very much. And out of many dialogues, we kind of concluded that it was not important for us to create a narrative architectural context for this collection, more a feeling context. For sure. Uh, us designers are interested in the life of people, so clothes is one small part. For sure, the environment is uh, even more imp important. So it's natural that anything that defines the life of people is, in is uh, an interesting subject for, uh, for fashion, because fashion is about the life of people. Uh, and it's true that, for instance, in, the, in this case, uh, architecture helped us to describe or to tell the feelings and the ideas we had. So this kind of strange, abstract place that are not inside, are not outside, with material that uh, leads a lot to tactility, to, to sensuality. So, but it is needed because um, it helps to define what you want to say. It requires so much. There's so many moving parts, um, but I see in your work, both Raf and um, independently and with Prada, um, both fashion and architecture as a vehicle for communicating um, emotion yes, yes, yes. Sure. and story most of the time, just different it's scales. Very much our aim. For sure, well, congratulations. Use, I, I am, and Thank he also more and more want to express ideas and uh, possibly good ideas, intelligent ideas through fashion in general. Can I just say I appreciated the choreography as well, the playfulness of the movement. Um, I've been dying to see that um, in a fashion show. So. Thank you. Thank I you so it. much. You are so kind. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Celeste. Thank you. Thank Take care. You. Bye bye. Hello, Elisa. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing good. Very How nice to meet you. 
Thank you for having us. Which of school course. you come from? I'm studying fashion design at Bunka Fashion College in Tokyo. Oh. Great. What year? I mean, my third year. Okay, great. Going well? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm trying okay. my best. Fantastic. <laughs> Looking forward. Still liking the choice? I do. I'm passionate about what I'm doing. Great. <laughs> great. That's the most important thing. Yeah. So, uh, in your previous question and answer session, you have mentioned how impactful technology is in our lives almost as an extension of ourselves. But there is many types of technology, technology in materials, production, marketing, or even logistics of distribution. So from all of those in this new collection, which technological innovation has impacted you the most and why? If I have to be honest, I think that this collection has been mainly dealing with other technology aspects because it has its collection, I think, very much connected to the feelings of the human being and very much related to our, our world right now. I think because it was a collection that was dealing a lot with the idea of the emotions from the human being towards what's happening in the world. I think that we were more looking at a, like an, an opposite of technological kind of um, yes, actually, sensibili actually. sensibility, I would almost say, because mm -hmm. it's, it's very much about tactility, it's very much about contrasts, architecturally, senses. as well as senses, as well as um, in the clothes itself. I think that the technology, it's more in the way fashion now, it's very how it uh, uh, connects you to people. So the fact that now we are here with you, that, that for me at least was a huge change because uh, instead of having real people in, in a physical show, you have to deal with, we are searching for humanity in a relationship like, like we are doing now. And that we depend from technology. So what interests me a lot at the moment, how make technology at the service of your idea and your feelings not that not you are at the service of technology, but vice versa, technology is an instrument. So we have to use it in the best way possible to transmit your feeling, your ideas, and so on. Uh, talking about uh, material, technicalities, there are technicalities that are not technological, or you can call them technological, uh, if you mean experience, different way of working things, uh, different material, different approach. But probably it's not what people think about technology when we do, for instance, a renylon, that, is, that was a technological material. But because we aim a lot to human senses, uh, feelings, uh, probably, the technology entered from another side, the one expressed you before. And then obviously because of the world situation, technology is automatically it's, it's so present in our world in order to be able to show our work right now. Because we can't really do real shows. Uh, so it makes you think about how feelings, uh, visuals, or possibly picked up worldwide or ex, ex, um, showed worldwide through technology. And I think that's a very new, uh, it's very new for all of us in fashion because we are so used to the life experience of a show. Actually, I would say that uh, even the physical space is uh, so much uh, the opposite of technology. Of course, yeah. it requires maybe a lot of technology to build it, but the impact that you want to give was like of this abstract space of color, material, tactiles, that you don't know if it's inside, outside. It's an abstract space, but full of feelings and humanity, I would say. Okay, thank you so much for the answer. Thank, thank you so you. much. Nice to meet you. you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Hello, Faris. I'm Faris from Morocco, and I study menswear design at St. George's Martins in London. Great. And I wanted to ask you, so from what I've seen from the runway, it seems like you've created a kind of community. And on your last show, you talked about the Prada uniform. So for you, what is the new menswear Prada uniform? The fact is that not each season we talk about the same subject. 
And uh, the idea uh, for, for us designer, any, any season, any collection, you respond to stimulus that comes from the world and so on. And so uh, if, if it's something a uniform that is always still there, but the focus of this collection uh, was about physicality against uh, construction. So I, I don't know which is the new uniform, except you want to talk about the Long John as a mm. uniform. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't think there was any connection in, in relation to how we perceive uniforms theoretically. But obviously it could be seen as a uniform in the sense that there was a uniformity literally from the first to the last silhouette because they all wear a long john. And the long john to be represented something in a way completely disconnected from a uniform. It's completely the opposite almost, I think. Um, no, actually it's interesting because it, it was a uniform in the show, uh, but yeah, definitely yeah. long john is not a uniform. Is yes, it? yeah. So it's kind of a mysterious. Mysterious? Mysterious piece as well, at the same time. You find them mysterious? Yeah, because as you said, they could I like that. Take yes, you. absolutely. I no. love that. Very good. Yeah. But it's, 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 not, it's not very often that we find, you, or you can find in fashion something that is so flexible, so di with different many facets. So that is a good example of fashion for me. Because like with one piece, you can express so many things and give a living open to any possibility. So actually, yeah. we are very satisfied about it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Faris. Thank you, Faris. Hello, Cameron. Hi. Hi. How are you? Nice to meet you. Good. Thank <laughs> you. Nervous? No, no. <laughs> Us too. <laughs> um, I'm Cameron Stolt from the United States, studying fashion design at the Fashion Institute of Technology School of Graduate Studies in New York. Um, thank you so much for having me. Thank oh, you to thank you. you for coming. Uh, <laughs> what year are you in? I'm, uh, it's my second year. It's the last year of the MFA. Great. Okay, I'm so, curious what you want um, to ask. What I wanted to know, what are some of the ways, if any, in which you strived to make this collection feel more personal, valuable, or perhaps respond to fashion's current call for authenticity? Hmm. At all times, no matter what situation we are in. Uh, the, the other part of the question, I think it is very connected to uh, our personal feelings, especially with what's, how we feel about what's going on right now for all of us, for everybody in the world. And I think more than ever, we very much felt like, how can we express that in clothes, in the environment in which we are going to present the clothes? Uh, this this per personal psychology of how you deal with the situation in the world. Actually, this time it was particularly, the, the architecture was particularly relevant because basically, at, at least us, uh, I, I live kind of secluded, so it's, uh, this really corresponds to this moment where you are inside the bubble that, and this space is not an inside, it's not an outside, it's not nature, but it's not even a, a, an inside. So it's an abstract space full basically of um, feelings, uh, sensibilities, uh, warmth, sensuality, and, and, and tough. Your personal uh, values and authenticity throughout this entire conversation regardless um mm. so it's great to hear and it's it's been really wonderful confirmed <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you very much cameron hi good morning good morning good morning hi papa how are you hi mr simmons i'm fine hello mrs prada <laughs> are you studying I in new york Yes, I am. Uh, what course? I am Fashion Design MFA, School of Graduate Studies. Oh, great. Which year? Um, final year. Oh, great. Good luck. <laughs> well, we, are happy, we are happy to meet you. Very happy. Same. I'm curious what you want to ask us. <laughs> I'll be easy, I promise. You can be difficult. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. As leading global luxury designers, 
In what ways can luxury exist or thrive in the absence of wealth? I'm ready to answer to you because this is a question that, of course, uh, it's, it's always in my thoughts. Because I was b born like uh, uh, wanting to be political and after I finished being a fashion designer. And I have to say that the two things really don't uh, go together so well. So what we can do is uh, eventually making more um, open to people, give more possibilities, more uh, inclusion. I think the same. It can be an example indeed for inclusivity and for positivism. But I would also be interested to hear, in this case, your thoughts about your own question. How do you feel yeah. about it? I think it's very interesting because, I mean, coming from Ghana, we have luxury designers, right? But then when you look at places like France or Paris and Milan, the things that make fashion luxurious, for example, a mink coat doesn't necessarily translate to you know, the Ghanaian woman who is seasonally in like heat, right? So we have to also try and find ways to value our local textiles. For example, in Ghana, we have kente fabric, and this is slowly becoming um, a luxurious fabric. So in terms of valuing our artisanal crafts, but then also partnering with global brands like Prada, for example, who's doing amazing work, you have Prada group, which does things from architecture. I did research on Prada, very interesting. Mm -hmm. But these are ways that we can collaborate in terms of designers coming together and then seeing how we can translate luxury to Africans, that, for example. That, yes, that, that for sure. I, I totally agree. I think uh, it's, we, have to, we have to do that. It's very, it's very relevant. It's the duty of everybody. So. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you very so much. So if you Papa. have anything to propose, please. <laughs> Stay in touch. Okay. I'll be in touch. Okay. Great. Bye bye. Thank you. Grazie. Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. I'm Xin Yi from China and I study architecture at Tsinghua University in Beijing. Actually, I'm always wondering that uh, in a society of increasing insecurity, will fashion design become more reserved or bold? I think that it goes to the meaning of clothes in general. So. Uh, uh, clothes helps help define your your personality, what you want to show in life. So, in general, clothes sometimes it express power, sometimes it express sexuality, sometimes it, it express rebellion, sometimes it express it can express any kind of uh, variation or nuance of your thinking. So, of course, probably in this moment, the fact that you are maybe alone. Uh, it changes a bit in, in the sense of comfort, but I think that still the clothes, actually the reason of the clothes are the fact that they can help express you better your ideas, your personality, what you want to show to the world, what you want to hide. In that sense, that is the role of clothes. And if in this moment, because you are more uh, in danger, maybe you want some different clothes, but for instance, I, I'm not. Uh, personally, I didn't change any attitude towards the way I dress because uh, probably what I think is more important than uh, the consolation of com comfort. For us as fashion designers, obviously, we, we still like to express um, different aspects that clothing can mean for a human being at whatever moment in time and I think right now this collection is talking a lot about the tactility and the, f the literal uh, physical feeling clothes can have. Thinking about aspects such as comfort, protection, beauty in general. For that reason this, this collection deals with juxtaposition of color, juxtaposition of softness and, and hardness to express the reality of the world and at the same time express also the possible feelings that everybody has dealing with this isolation. I really like what you share with us. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Tsine. Thank you. Hello, Sylvia. How are you? Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Uh, I'm from Sara Fele. Yes. I study philosophy at uh, San Raffaele University in uh, Milan. Great. Great. 
Uh, I would like to ask uh, the following question. Uh, could fashion mean a performance through which we witness the continuous and uh, countless creation of uh, our uh, identities? Yes, I would yes. say yes. <laughs> I think we are both big believers yes. of that, not believers, that like, is that, is yes. like, that is by definition for us. The sense of fashion is exactly that one. Yes. Uh, to be able to express your ideas, your thoughts, your personality, your changes and so on is the only real uh, sense of fashion mm. and what makes me feel that I do a job that makes sense is that mm. one. I mean, uh, in fact, uh, that uh, fashion is the opportunity to stage on one's own personalities um, in its multiple aspects, in an open dialogue, in, uh, in which uh, the, the most disparate elements come together, the desire to anticipate the, the future, but also the memory of the past, uh, art, daily life, uh, different materials, fabrics, and uh, different elements fashion gives us back um, in the present of a jacket, of uh, pants, shoes, you, you should teach fashion. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to add... Perfect definition of I, fashion. I would love to add the, the feelings and the thoughts you are dealing with at the moment in time that is happening because fashion is always so much about the moment in time it's happening. And I find an interesting question because when we were filming the uh, runway, because obviously we can't do a real show, there is a certain perception that we both have about how to present the collection basically. So that amplifies immediately how boys uh, are in an environment, how they are walking and everything. And one thing happened which was not planned at all and that's what I love so much about fashion and I think it's in relation to your question. What I want to say is that we don't always want to control so much uh, only. We take the control in a creative uh, sense because we are decisive on what we want but then I think it's also interesting what can possibly come out of it and what can happen that you were not planning and I think with this show it was very much the case as you could see these dancing moments it was something very spontaneous this was not at all something that was planned long time in advance we were in the spaces during the filming and I could feel the kind of moments of boys being in these spaces feeling very happy in a way, very excited. I don't know, it was almost kind of like a, like a, a physical feeling disconnected from anything else. And, and I, I just thought at one point like, oh, yeah, like maybe it's your own personal club or something, you know, like somebody can right now, you know, lots of people are so constricted and they cannot go to the places where they like to go to enjoy themselves. And at the same time, one just started da dancing. And then at the end, we had this idea to do this, which I think is the beauty about fashion, that it can kind of just suddenly also flip to something so disconnected almost from how you were kind of maybe planning it. And then in the future, once it's out, the audience connect. And uh, it is in this sense that the fashion, uh, it is a valid tool to understand who we are at all times. If it could do that, it's even better. Uh, I think more vice versa, but that be very, uh, uh, I think it's very interesting yes. because maybe you were something mm. and you didn't expect you could be also that personality. For me, the game of clothes is a fantastic game. I, I did it, I use it in my life. I think it's really when I am in good mood, of course, to see how you change the perception even of yourself. Not only you, you want to represent something that maybe you are not, just to confuse people, but also it changes the way you perceive yourself. That mm. I never thought about. Mm. Uh, thank you for thank you. Uh, the opportunity. <laughs> thank you, thank you to you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. How are, How are you, are you? Ian? Nice I'm to well. meet you. I'm Ian from the United States and I study architecture at the Harvard University Graduate School of Design in Cambridge. I'm wondering who is Prada designing this collection for? The hardest question that could possibly be asked for me is if somebody asks me, who do you design for? Because I think that for many, many years, maybe even like the first 
one and a half decades of my own brand. I very often really designed with somebody in mind thinking that's the person that I designed for. And at one point, I think it becomes a completely different thing that you design, uh, obviously you design for an audience, a person, but it's also very uh, disconnected one way or another. So I see it more as an audience that can connect to what we design for so many different reasons and in so many different ways, purely for its aesthetic, for its content, for its, you know, like whatever the reason for the person is. So I, therefore I find it more and more difficult to kind of define the actual audience. It's, it's too broad, it's too, it's not one audience. It's for anybody who is basically uh, interested or feel connected. Me, the opposite, because I always thought uh, about uh, having object in mind. Actually, I saw clothes more as object themselves uh, than on bodies. And eventually, I thought about what I like. So uh, maybe it was not the correct way, but I always wanted to do what I liked, uh, what I thought it was right, responding to various suggestions. So I don't have the problem, because I never thought about who is my clientele, who is the people who is going to... I do what I think it makes sense, and who wants, buys it, uses it, and after they do whatever they want. Sometimes yeah. they ask me, do you, are you upset when you see somebody in a clothes that doesn't look good? They say, no, first of all, I never judge people from the way they dress, never. Believe it or not, it's true. I only notice when some, something is particularly inspiring but after it's not my my object anymore is there and people do whatever they want so actually I don't have that problem because I never did anything for anybody also I always said that I I hate when you say you have your icon I never had an icon oh. uh, and I don't like the idea of icon uh, I just do what I think it makes sense to me of course and also I said the more I'm open to the world the more I am let's say intelligent the more I am in contact with the reality the more probably what I do makes sense to people and if and if they buy it means that what I do makes sense to them I'm very fascinated to see how people uh, apply the clothes I can be extremely inspired with anybody who wears the clothes in a way that's completely different from how I proposed it, for example. I find it actually rather challenging and sometimes it's part of the drive to, to continue as well. So for me, there is a connection to an audience, but in a way it's also very abstract. It can be just somebody I pick up in the street or in a magazine, another person who kind of does something else with it. But it's not that it's kind of like disrupting my way of thinking about the creative process. That is in a way, I think, a bit like you, like this is how I see it. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. It was Ian. with you both. Thank you, so, thank thank you. you very much. Hello, Mubin, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you how for you staying guys? so late, because I'm, I'm afraid it's very late there. Yeah, it creates quite night now. Yes, but, you are, but you are young, <laughs> so it's not a problem. <laughs> no, it's fine. So let me introduce myself. I'm Mubin from South Korea. I study design management at Pongin University, IDAS, in Seoul. So firstly, I really enjoy the collection, especially values, patterns, and pocket with gloves impressed to me. So my question is, how do you find the balance between your preference and commercial value and current trend? Thank you. It's definitely the core of our work because uh, even if we are creative people, our job is, uh, is a commercial job because we sell clothes. So as much as uh, creative you can be, our job is to serve the need of people, is to, to do something that corresponds to your idea, but also that people should, should buy. That is really the most important point and very much today Basically, the all the aspect of being a fashion designer uh, is exactly that, that kind of combination between freedom of expression, creativity, and reality. You know, I think when you, when you are for a long time doing the fashion job, you are well aware that the desires you have to design can sometimes be very extreme, and you are aware that that is 
very often very disconnected from the reality of what you sell. But I think that for us, being in it for a long time, it's more a matter of balancing it. But I'm also never really thinking about designing something with the idea that it couldn't sell. But what I perceive as something that I really think that it's great on a person, maybe it's then not the majority of people always who, who want that. But then I'm also happy to kind of balance that with, with things from which I know that it's for much more people. Sometimes just I confuse about that. Should I follow the trend or should I follow my preference to design? You should follow yourself. Yes. Everybody should follow your, themselves. Yeah. That is for me is crucial and me fundamental. Too. Yeah, me too. Clothes are an expression of your idea, your personality. Once I remember somebody asked, how can I be elegant? Be, know yourself, be yourself. Then you know exactly what you want and what you need. Hmm. That for me, it's, it's, it's crucial. I know it's difficult because you need to know yourself, which is not easy, but it's fundamental in the life of people in general. Like you have to choose your job, you have to choose your ideas, and you have to choose who you are. And after the choice of the fashion is so easy. Hmm. But if you are lost, you don't know who you are, of course, anytime you can take a different personality, uh, but for sure, person is the, the only very important thing. The clothes, it's at the service of your life and, your, and, and you as a person. Thank you so much. Thank you to Thank you. you Thank you, Mubin. Thank you, Mubin. Thanks. Bye-bye.